Every year, flagship robotic vacuums get more and more advanced features, and their price tags keep going up. But do those advanced features actually work well enough to justify the extra cost? Today I've got the latest and greatest robotic vacuums from Roborock, DreamTech, Eufy, Narwhal, and Ecovax, and I'll be putting them up against the best vacuum of 2023, the DreamTech L10S Ultra, to see which ones are worth the extra money. And as always, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel. First, we'll test their vacuuming performance on carpet and on hard flooring. Then we'll see how well they mop in a variety of different situations. We'll test how well they deal with pet hair and long human hair. After that, we'll see which vacuums require the least maintenance. We'll test their object recognition and ability to avoid getting stuck. And last, we'll look at their specific apps, smart home integrations, and privacy features. To test vacuuming performance, I prepared a mixture of 10 grams each of rice, flaxseed husks, salt, and flour to simulate different dirt and dust particles, and I ran each vacuum on their maximum suction power using a vacuum-only two-pass cleaning. I weighed the dustbins before and after each cleaning task, and then again after the auto dustbin emptying process. And I thoroughly vacuumed with a corded upright in between tests. First up is the least expensive vacuum in this video, the DreamTech L10S Ultra, which can usually be found for around $650. The L10S Ultra was my top pick overall in my 2023 robotic vacuum competition, and I've been using this vacuum in my house for the last nine months, but I did give it a refresh by replacing the brushes, filter, and dust bag before testing. After the carpet vacuuming task, the L10S Ultra had picked up 27 grams, or 67.5% of the mixture, and after the auto empty process, there were two grams left in the bin. Next for $10.99 is the the flagship from Ecovacs, their X2 Omni. And unlike the previous Ecovacs vacuums, the X2 Omni traded the top-mounted 360-degree LiDAR navigation system for a front-facing LiDAR and camera-based system, which based on my testing seems to be a significant downgrade. And in the vacuuming test, you can see that the X2 Omni failed to establish straight lines and even managed to get itself stuck in between the carpet and my TV stand. During the carpet vacuuming task, the X2 Omni picked up 21 grams, or 52.5% of the mixture, and pushed a significant amount of rice and flaxseed over the edge of the carpet and never returned to pick it up. On the bright side, the X2 Omni was able to clear all but one gram out of its bin during the auto empty process. Next, for $11.99, is the newest vacuum from Narwhal, the Frio X Ultra. On the outside, the Frio X Ultra looks very similar to last year's Narwhal Frio, but the Ultra has a completely redesigned brush roller, which is supposed to be completely tangle free, and we'll test that later. After two vacuum Vacuuming passes, the Narwhal picked up just 18 and a half grams or 45% of the mixture. And instead of an auto empty system, the Narwhal uses a dust compression process. So it was left with all 18 and a half grams in its dust bag. After that for $1,359 is the DreamTech X30 Ultra, which should theoretically be an upgraded version of the L10S Ultra with new features like mop extend, hot water mop cleaning, and the ability to drop its mopping pads at the base. Unfortunately, in my carpet testing, the X30 Ultra picked up just 14 grams or 35% of the mixture, roughly half as much as the L10S Ultra, and on closer inspection it looks like the smaller filter included in the X30 became quickly clogged with flour, which significantly reduced its suction, causing it to leave almost all the rice and flax behind. And while the auto empty system did clear all but one gram from the bin, it wasn't able to clear out the flour from the filter to regain suction power. Next, with an MSRP of $17.99, the Roborock S8 Max V Ultra is the most expensive robotic vacuum that I've ever tested. The S8 Max V has a few upgrades over last year's S8 Pro, including a side mop for better edge coverage and an extending side brush to reach into corners and under furniture. But it still uses Roborock's dual roller design, which didn't perform as well as the S7 Max V's single roller in last year's competition. In the carpet vacuuming test, the S8 Max V Ultra picked up 25 grams or 62.5% of the mixture, which was enough to put it in second place behind the DreamTech L10S Ultra. But after the auto empty process, the S8 Max V Ultra still had 4 grams of dust left in its bin. And last, I wasn't sure where to put this vacuum in the list because at the time of filming, Yuffie wasn't able to tell me the Kickstarter debut price for their new S1 Pro flagship. However, in the last few years, I've been pretty hard on Yuffie vacuums since they always seem to be a year or two behind when it comes to the latest features. But the S1 Pro is full of new and unique technology compared to these other flagship vacuums and combines a sleek, more rectangular shape with front-facing LiDAR navigation and a roller-style mop that incorporates a dirty water tank into the robot itself to continuously clean the mop rather than periodically returning to the base for cleaning. 
The S1 Pro does use a slightly smaller single roller for vacuuming, which may have hurt it. And in the carpet vacuuming test, the S1 Pro picked up 22 grams or just 55% of the flour, salt, flax, and rice mixture, which isn't all that impressive, but was still good enough to put it in third place. And in the auto empty test, the S1 Pro was able to clear all but one gram of debris from its bin. And that means that overall, the results of this year's carpet vacuuming test were extremely underwhelming with last year's L10S Ultra finishing first with 67.5% pickup, even though it finished fifth in last year's video. Thankfully, the hard floor performance of these vacuums was significantly better. I used the same 40 gram mixture to test each vacuum, again on maximum suction, two pass, vacuum only mode, but this time on my LVP flooring, and both the DreamTech L10S Ultra and X30 Ultra were able to pick up all 40 grams. The Narwhal Frio X Ultra and Eufy S1 Pro picked up 39 grams, the Roborock S8 Max V Ultra picked up 37 grams, and the Ecovacs X2 Omni picked up 31 grams, or around 78% of the flour, salt, flax, and rice mixture. So for vacuuming only performance, the DreamTech L10S Ultra was the winner for both carpet and hard floors, with the Roborock S8 Max V in second and the Eufy S1 Pro in third. But as I said, none of them were even close to the performance of the Roborock S7 Max V Ultra from last year when it comes to dirt and dust pickup. Next, to test mopping performance, I started with the most realistic test for my house, which is dried mud tracked in on shoes and feet. And for this test, I spread 10 milliliters of Florida mud over a two foot by two foot square, and I dried it with a hairdryer. Each vacuum was set to maximum water flow and two passes on a mop and vacuum combined run. And then after each run, I sprayed the area with three sprays of water and I wiped it clean with a paper towel, and then set it aside to air dry. And in between each test, I mopped the floor with a traditional wet mop and I hand dried it with a towel. By far the best performance visually, by feel, and by the paper towel test was the Eufy S1 Pro, and in addition to those results, I also examined the floor using a microscope after each test. And you can see that the Eufy was much more effective at removing the dirt from the indented areas, and it also did a much better job cleaning the joints in between each plank. The DreamTech L10S and Ecovacs X2 Omni were the next best moppers, but they weren't anywhere close to the performance of the Eufy S1 Pro, and the DreamTech X30, Roborock S8 Max V, and Narwhal Frio X finished in fourth, 5th, and 6th. Of those, the Narwhal was the most surprising result, since the Narwhal Frio was the top performer in my last video when it came to mopping. And one of the big selling points for the Frio X Ultra this year was the ability to detect extra dirty floors and clean them more thoroughly using what they call Frio Mode. Unfortunately, in my testing, the Frio Mode run was by far the worst, and to me it didn't look like it attempted any extra cleaning at all. And it only chose to do a single pass instead of a two pass run like I selected the first time, despite a very visibly dirty floor. Another heavily advertised feature on both the DreamTech X30 and the Roborock S8 Max V Ultra is edge mopping. The X30 has DreamTech's new Mop Extend technology that enables it to push its right mopping pad out to the side to get closer to walls and under cabinets, appliances, and furniture. While the new Roborock S8 Max V has a new mini mop sticking out of the side of the vacuum to let it reach more places. To test these corner mopping and tight space features, I smeared a small amount of ketchup in hard to reach places under my kitchen sink, in the corner of my cabinets, and next to my oven, as well as under both of my kitchen stools. And then I sent each robot on a single pass mopping only run, and I took pictures of each ketchup smear both before and after the run. In this test, the top scores went to the Ecovacs X2 Omni, Narwhal Frio X Ultra, and Roborock S7 Max V. Sort of. The Frio X Ultra, X2 Omni, and S8 Max V were the only vacuums to actually touch each glob of ketchup, but the X2 only fully cleaned the corner and under the first stool, and it left sticky streaks of ketchup in the other three locations, while the Roborock and Narwhal only fully cleaned under the stools and left ketchup at all three locations under the cabinets. The DreamTech X30, on the other hand, cleaned completely under both stools and in the corner of the kitchen, but completely missed the area next to the oven and under the sink, and it didn't use its Mop Extend technology nearly as much as I had expected, even though I have it configured in the app to use it liberally. The Eufy S1 Pro completely cleaned the corner and under the sink, and it partially cleaned by the oven and under the first stool, but for some reason it didn't even attempt to go under the second stool, which I don't think is indicative of its cleaning abilities, since on a second run it had no problem cleaning under both stools. And the worst edge performance by far came from the DreamTech L10S Ultra that completely missed the corner and under the sink, and it partially cleaned by the oven and the first stool, and the only area that it completely cleaned was under the back stool. Another important thing to mention is that during this test, the Narwhal and Roborock left the entire kitchen floor feeling extremely sticky. Oh, the floor is very sticky. 
and the reason that I ended up running the UV vacuum a second time was to clean up the sticky floors from the other vacuums. And for big messes like this, the UV's constant washing of the mop and onboard dirty water tank left the floors feeling extremely clean. Because while the other robots can only absorb stains onto their pads and then wash them off later, the UV lifts stains off the floor and then it cleans the roller right away. To try to better illustrate this difference, I taped a white sheet of paper to the ground and I ran each mop through a line of wet soy sauce to see how much ended up on the paper. And you can see that the Yuffie was by far the cleanest and tracked almost none of the soy sauce onto the white paper. Another issue with wet and dirty mopping pads is that if your house has a combination of carpet and hard floors, the mop pads have to get lifted to avoid getting dirty wet water onto your carpet. Thankfully, all the robots in this video have the ability to lift their mops, but the Roborock has by far the most at 20 millimeters of lift, and the DreamTech L10S Ultra has just about a third of that at 7 millimeters. To test how effective each robot is at lifting its mop, I sent them out on a vacuum and mopping combined area clean, and I followed them around with a moisture meter as they vacuumed my high pile carpet. The two worst performers in this test were the DreamTech L10S Ultra due to only having 7mm of mop raising, but the Ecovacs X2 Omni also did surprisingly terribly despite having a claimed 15mm of lifting capabilities. And the only vacuum that completed an entire run without getting the carpet wet at all was the Roborock S8 Max V Ultra. But the DreamTech X30 Ultra and the Narwhal would have done fine if they hadn't made navigation errors, and the Eufy S1 Pro needs to have its software changed just a little bit because it doesn't raise its mopping pad nearly early enough when it's going over the corners of carpet. But other than that, it had plenty of mop lift to keep my high pile carpet completely dry. So just by looking at the rankings, it might seem like the Eufy, DreamTech, and Roborock had similar mopping capabilities, but in practice, the Eufy's new roller style mop was in a completely different league, and I would guess that by 2025, every major vacuum manufacturer will have adopted this constant clean roller brush mopping style. But in 2024, the big focus, especially from Narwhal and DreamTech, was on hair pickup and tangle-free brushes. So to test this, I separated cotton balls into small tufts and I scattered them around my carpet. I then sent each vacuum on a single pass vacuum only run with maximum suction power and I found that most of the vacuums really struggled with this test. With the Eufy S1 Pro leaving the most tufts of hair, followed by the Ecovacs X2 Omni which blew the hair around with its exhaust ports. The Narwhal Frio X Ultra and DreamTech X30 also struggled and left about the same amount of clumped cotton, and the Roborock S8 Max V and DreamTech L10S performed the best, with the S8 Max V leaving just a single dense clump and the L10S leaving two very small tufts. Long hairs getting tangled on the brush roller is another very common issue, so to test that, I spread out exactly one gram of long hairs over the floor of my bathroom and I sent each vacuum on a two pass vacuum only run, and then I inspected the floor, rollers, and dustbins after each run. And in this test, the Roborock did the worst, actually getting so tangled that it stopped cleaning and said its brushes were jammed. The Eufy also had a problematic amount of hair tangled in its brush, but not enough to stop it, and the Ecovacs X2 Omni, DreamTech X30 Ultra, and Narwhal Frio X Ultra all had quite a bit of hair wrapped around their brush, but were still fully operational. And the DreamTech L10S Ultra was the top performer again with a noticeable amount of wrapped hairs, but not enough to be problematic. So based on that lackluster performance, I was slightly concerned that one full gram of hair was an unreasonable amount. So I repeated the test with just 20 individual strands, and the results were much more what I was expecting, with the Narwhal getting all but one strand into its dustbin, and the rest of the vacuums collecting the hair on the sides of their rollers like they should, where it can be easily removed during routine maintenance. And that brings up the next topic, which is how much attention each of these robots is going to need to stay functional, with the ultimate goal obviously being to have them clean your house without ever interacting with them. But we're still not there yet. For long term maintenance, all the vacuums are mostly the same, except for the Narwhal Frio X Ultra, which doesn't have an auto empty bin, but instead uses disposable bags in the vacuum itself that it says will last up to seven weeks. But that's probably only going to apply to houses with no pets and no carpet. Narwhal cites issues with bin clogging and odor as the reason to use their bags over an auto empty process, but in my testing, bin clogging is not really an issue in the latest robotic vacuums. And to test this, I filled each bin with stretched out matted cotton balls to see how many they could clear before clogging, and all the vacuums were able to clear four and five cotton balls, and the Eufy S1 Pro was the only vacuum that got clogged with six cotton balls, which is frankly a ridiculous amount of fluff and probably not realistic for vacuums that run even semi-frequently. The Narwhal does have something that it calls hair compression, which is supposed to pull all the loose debris to one side of the bag to make room for more, and I found that it mostly worked, but after adding four, five, and then six cotton balls, its suction was significantly reduced, and when its dust bag was full, it did a pretty poor job picking up the flour, salt, flax, and rice mixture, even off of hard flooring. 
That said, all these vacuums will still need some attention every 7 to 14 days to empty their dirty water tanks and refill the clean water. And that frequency will change depending on how often you mop and how large your house is. But it also varies from robot to robot as a function of tank capacity and water usage. I measured their total clean water capacity and the Narwhal Frio X Ultra and DreamTech X30 Ultra stand out with four and a half liter clean water tanks. Then I measured the water used per mop wash cycle and the Narwhal used the most at around 210 milliliters and the DreamTech X30 Ultra used the least at around 150 milliliters. And last, I measured the water used per 100 square feet of mopping, and the DreamTech L10S Ultra used the most at over 250 milliliters on average, and the X30 Ultra used the least at around 130 milliliters for each 100 square feet. And when you combine all that data, you can generally say that if you mop 300 square feet of flooring three times a week, the DreamTech L10S Ultra, Eufy S1 Pro, and Ecovacs X2 Omni will need to have their water tanks tended to once a week, the Narwhal Frio X Ultra could last about a week and a half, and the Roborock S8 Max V Ultra and DreamTech X30 Ultra could last around two weeks between water changes. But do keep in mind that the longer you wait between dirty water emptying, the more bacteria can grow, which causes a pretty unpleasant sewage-like smell. However, in my experience, mops that have automatic detergent dispensing do a much better job at resisting bacterial growth, and all the vacuums in this video except for the Ecovacs X2 Omni have either replaceable detergent cartridges or fillable tanks. The other area that bacteria and mold can grow is in the wet mopping pads while the robot is at the base. So all of this year's bases include heated mop drying, which run for between two and five hours after a mopping run, and I found that they are very effective, but my wife specifically wanted me to mention that the sound of the drying is noticeable, and louder than she would want to be in the same room with. So here's a quick sample of each vacuum's drying noise. And on top of that, the Eufy does a small mop rotation every 20 minutes during the drying, and it sounds like this. And quickly, while we're on the subject of noise, if you want to have these vacuums clean while you're in the house, I measured their noise level on three-quarter suction power, and here they are from loudest to quietest. Getting back to dock maintenance, dirt, hair, and debris will also inevitably end up in the mop's washing area, and all the bases are pretty easy to clean, which I do every few months. But the DreamTech X30 Ultra is the only one that automates that process with spinning rubber wipers that push any small to medium-sized debris into the drain at the back of the base. Everything that we've tested so far is going to influence your overall satisfaction with your vacuum. But in my experience from reading comments and asking people about their robotic vacuums, by far the most common and biggest complaint is that the vacuums get stuck and need constant babysitting. The good news is that most of these higher end vacuums very rarely get stuck, and they have tons of different sensors like LiDAR, structured light patterns, color cameras, and even 3D stereoscopic cameras to accurately map your house and avoid problematic areas. And in all of my testing, the only vacuum that had any issues at all was the Ecovacs X2 Omni. That is until I specifically started testing their object avoidance. To do this, I set out an untied shoe, a loose power cord, and some rubber dog poop, and I told each vacuum to clean the entire carpeted area. And in this test, the Roborock did the best, completely avoiding the poop and the shoe, and it did run over the power cord, but it didn't get stuck. The Eufy S1 Pro also did very well, and it saw the shoe, but unfortunately still got too close, and the shoelaces got tangled in the side brush. However, it did a good job avoiding the dog poop and the power cord, but as I mentioned in last year's video, I'd really prefer if the vacuums didn't try to clean right up to the edge of the poop, and I wouldn't be upset at all if they just stopped cleaning in a room completely after detecting pet waste. Both the DreamTech L10S Ultra and X30 Ultra Ultra touched the poop enough to move it and got stuck on the shoelaces, and the Ecovacs Omni seemed to see the cord, shoe, and poop, but it's just not good at navigating, so it ended up touching everything anyways. And then the Narwhal Frio X Ultra just indiscriminately plowed into everything in its path which is expected behavior since the Frio X Ultra doesn't have any cameras and relies on structured light for avoidance, which is better for privacy, but obviously not good for object recognition. I also tested each vacuum's ability to navigate chair legs and baseboards without excessively bumping into them, and the Eufy S1 Pro did a ridiculously good job of understanding where it could and couldn't fit, and it cleaned right up to the edge of walls and furniture without actually touching them at all. The Ecovacs X2 Omni, on the other hand, was the exact opposite, and it clumsily ran into everything and ended up leaving some scuff marks as a result, 
While the Roborock S8 Max-V did a good job not running into the walls, but like every Roborock that I've tested lately, it still had issues with its side brushes leaving swirl marks on my white baseboards. But back to the original complaint, in addition to using the built-in object avoidance and not leaving untied shoes on the ground when you know your vacuum is going to be running, one of the best things you can do to keep your vacuum out of trouble is to set up no-go zones and virtual boundaries to keep your vacuum out of problem areas that aren't kept picked up or have a lot of loose cords. In my testing, the Eufy Mock app, Dream Home app and Roborock app were all fantastic and worked perfectly every single time, allowing for easy map creation, room editing and naming, flooring type detection, and no-go zone placement, and the robots were able to precisely locate themselves within those maps. The Narwhal app was slightly worse and I had a lot of issues with room creation where the layout of my house wasn't allowing me to split rooms the way I wanted, and the worst by a significant margin was the Ecobax app that had the same room division issues as the Narwhal, but the biggest issue was that the X2 Omni's navigation just isn't good enough to figure out where it is on the map, and as a result the robot would accidentally pass through no-go zones, and when told to clean a specific area the X2 Omni constantly got lost and would end up wandering around aimlessly in completely different parts of the house, and it occasionally gave an error that the zone wasn't reachable. For scheduling, all the apps were easy to use and had plenty of options, but the Dream Home app was slightly better than the rest, with customizable settings per room and cleaning sequencing. So if you have a high pile carpet, you can set that room to get vacuumed first before the mopping pads get wet, and with the X30 Ultra, you can even have it leave its mopping pads at the base when it's vacuuming for extra peace of mind. And speaking of peace of mind, the last thing we need to talk about is privacy, because as I mentioned, all these vacuums except for the Narwhal use color video for object recognition, meaning there is a camera in your house connected to the internet, which you may or may not be comfortable with. Ecovax, Roborock, and DreamTech even let you use that camera to drive around your house and even do two-way audio calling, which they advertise as something that you could use to talk to your pet or as a security camera. And the Roborock actually has a find your pet feature that works surprisingly well, assuming your dog isn't terrified of your vacuum. Thankfully, from a privacy standpoint, the Roborock and DreamTech remote video features aren't enabled by default, and turning them on for the first time requires a combination of physical button presses on the robot itself. So they can't just be randomly turned on by somebody getting app access like they could with the Ecovax app. And even though the Eufy S1 Pro does have a front-facing camera and there is a manual driving control option in the app, there's no way to get a live video feed, at least for now. Another thing that's missing from the Eufy S1 Pro are voice assistant integrations. And currently, the only way to control the Eufy is from the phone app or using the buttons on the base station. For Google Home, the DreamTech and Roborock have fully functional integrations where you can ask your Nest devices to clean a specific room, which works very well. Unfortunately, while the Ecovax also has a Google Home integration, it didn't work for me and my Nest Hub always just said that Ecovax was unreachable. All the vacuums except for the Eufy have Amazon Echo integrations, but the only ones that can clean a specific room are the Roborock and the DreamTech by saying Ask Roborock or Ask DreamBot and the rest were just limited to start and stop commands, which I don't find particularly useful. The Roborock and Ecovax vacuums also have built-in voice assistants named Rocky and Yiko, and I found that they worked pretty well, but I'm personally not a fan of having yet another always-on microphone in my house listening in. For Home Assistant users, the Roborock integration is built-in and works perfectly, and Ecovax also has a built-in integration, but in my experience it doesn't work very well with their newer vacuums like the X2 Omni. DreamTech also has a very good custom integration that can be installed with hacks, but unfortunately, while the DreamTech and Roborock vacuums technically communicate locally, they can't be blocked from the internet without causing an endless reconnection loop, and in fact, all the vacuums showed up as offline in their apps when they got blocked from the internet. So which flagship vacuum is the best in 2024? Considering all the scores, the Roborock S8 Max-V Ultra finished on top with a B-plus average, but the DreamTech L10S Ultra finished close behind that in second place for a third of the price. The Roborock scored higher than the DreamTech in object avoidance, edge mapping, and mop lifting, but the much cheaper DreamTech L10S Ultra had better carpet and hard floor vacuuming, and it did better in the dried mud mopping test, which seemed like much more important scores. However, if mopping is your main concern, the Eufy S1 Pro is in a completely different league with its onboard dirty water tank and roller style mop, but it did have a lower vacuuming performance and some of its other features are still up in the air since it hasn't actually been released yet. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the Eufy S1 Pro will be launched on Kickstarter March 28th, and as I'm writing this, I don't actually know the price, but I'll add it right here when I find out. Also, for full transparency, the vacuum that I've been testing is called the Eufy Mach R1 Always Clean, but Eufy is planning on dropping the Mach name, changing the model to the S1 Pro, and adding it to the Eufy Home app. According to Eufy, the user experience is going to be exactly the same, but as we know, nothing with Kickstarter is ever guaranteed. So for vacuums that are currently available, the DreamTech L10S Ultra is the most well-rounded, affordably priced, and probably the best option for the vast majority of people. I do really like the addition of the side mop and extending side brush on the Roborock S8 
Max V Ultra, but for an almost $2,000 vacuum, I thought that its cleaning performance was pretty lackluster, and I really just can't recommend it at that price. But my biggest disappointments were the Narwhal Frio X Ultra and the Dreamtech X30 Ultra that seemed to actually be downgrades from their previous models in terms of actual cleaning, despite their new features and higher costs. And I was fully expecting to replace my L10S Ultra with the X30 Ultra, but now I don't think I'll be doing that. And last, the Ecovacs X2 Omni was just a mess. Not only did it have the lowest average score by a pretty significant margin, but it also just constantly got stuck and lost during routine cleaning. And older Ecovacs with top mounted LiDAR like the T10 and T20 Omni did a much better job with navigation, so hopefully Ecovacs is gonna go back to that in the future. I've got links to all the vacuums from this video down in the description, and as always, I appreciate if you use those links since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. I also need to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting unbiased and unsponsored testing, check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.